Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get our hands dirty and begin adding some code. Okay, so the three main things we're going to start with before we even design these things are as follows. So I want to explain these three concepts. So the reason why we're using OOP number one is that we want to have reusable code and um, you see, when you use OOP, you create what are known as classes. These classes are separate files, which you can reuse over and over in different projects. So it doesn't make much sense to you to create a new code for every single project that you do when you're going to be creating pretty much the same things like login and sign up. So you can create what are known as classes or models which you can reuse over and over in different projects to speed up your work. So this is why we're going to use object-oriented programming. That's number one. Now then we're going to go to MVC. So why are we using MVC? Now MVC stands for Model View Controller. So this is quite a hard concept to grasp when you're beginning. So I don't mind repeating it over and over in every single project. So. MVC is a system where we separate our files into three types. So we're going to have models, we're going to have views, and we're going to have controllers. So normally, how we used to make websites a long time ago was, you get a template like this one, you create your HTML, whether it's a template or you created it yourself. And then what you do is you go into the file itself where there's HTML, and then you start replacing things in there, uh, you, you obviously add PHP code at the very top of the page and then you put that result of the HTML at the bottom of the page where the view, the user will actually see the result of the calculation that you do. So normally it would be something like this. So let me try and load a page. So in here I'm going to go to the same, let's try the, uh, an index page, right? I'm going to load this index page in here. And this is how it looks like. So this is a basic HTML page. So what you'd normally do when you are running PHP is that you'd move stuff like this and then put some PHP tags at the top like so. So whatever you add in here is considered PHP and won't actually display to the user unless you echo it. Now, the result of what you do here is saved inside variables that you're going to add down here and integrate with your HTML. For example, the username on that particular page, instead of nice admin, you can put a variable here instead so that whatever calculations are done here, the result will show in the place of this text. So that was pretty standard. Now the problem with this is that all your calculations are going to be here, right? And in an event where you need to change this page, you want a new design for this page. It means just changing the design, you have to start interfering with the calculations because that same page also contains the calculations here from PHP, which have nothing to do with the view that the user sees. So it was considered better practice to separate the two. So we put this calculation away in a different page and that page is going to be called the controller here. So the controller does all the calculations in PHP. So inside the controller there's no HTML, just PHP, all the calculations. Uh, the controller is pretty much the brain of your website, okay? And then of course we're going, we're going to have this bottom part where we have the HTML and a few parts are replaced with dynamic content. And this part is obviously the view. So everything that uh, your customer or your user is going to see on your website is a view. Regardless what it is, it's a view. Nothing of the controller will be seen by the user, only the view. So that's pretty much straightforward. And then we have a model. Now a model is your data storage. This is your memory. So a model is the class or the, uh, what do you call this? Actually, it's a class. In this case, we're going to be using classes because it's OOP. 
So it's going to be a class that connects you to the memory. In this case, it's the database because that's where we are storing everything in the database. So let's say we have tables in our database. We have a users table, we have a videos table, we have a courses table, etc. So for each one of these, I like to create a model for each. Now you can create one model for all of them. That's up to you but it's just my own standard practice and others use that as well to create a model for each of these. So any new table that you create in your system, just create a model for it so that if we want data from, let's say the users table, we just get the users model and then we ask it for specific data. So normally when you are reading from a database, you have to write a query, right? Query is equal to, and then you say something like select uh, from users, and then you specify your terms. What record number do you want, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe you can say something like where ID is equal to 10. So this will read you one record that has the ID of 10, right, from the database. Now, instead, you can have a model. Instead of doing all this, all you need to do with the model is just say uh, model, and then you just say something like read and then you put 10 in there like that. So the model is going to know we want to read from record number 10 and then it will give you a result immediately. So you skip all that process of connecting to the database, um, creating a query, checking to see if there was a result or not. All that is handled inside the model. You just tell it I want record number 10 and then it's going to tell you oh that record does not exist or it's there, here's the result, etc., etc. So everything is done as, um, what do you call this, an abstraction. So you don't see much. You just see this line and everything happens behind the scenes inside the model file. Okay, great. So this is why we're using MVC because it's very convenient. It separates the code. It makes it easier to upgrade your system because you can always add, if I want to add a new table, I just know after adding the table, I just need to add a model and it's part of the system now. So if I want a new page, I just need to add a view and a controller for that page and we are done. Okay, so it makes upgrading your website much easier. So that's why we're using that. And then in order to use MVC, um, we'll need a routing system. So a router is good for two things in our case, uh, but normally a router is good um, to package the URL. So the router deals with the URL, whatever link you give it. So if you go to any website, like uh, let's say this is ZAMP. So you see there's apachefriends.org and then this slide slash download.html. So in this case, this is straightforward. The server is going to load download.html page, but let this don't let this fool you. This is not really a static HTML page. It's actually a dynamic page. There's some uh, dynamic stuff going on here, and there's a router that serves this page here. So the router does two things. Normally your, uh, let's say you have a new website and you don't add a router what will happen is your links will look something like this, mywebsite.com, and then you have maybe index.php, and then you have a question mark to add the params uh, or information about that. Let's say on the index page, you want to get a record number, a course with an ID of 10. So here you're just going to say course is equal to 10 and and then you say ID is equal to five, maybe, I don't know. So this is how you send information through the URL to the particular page, the index.php page. So on your website, index.php will be loaded. And then anything after the uh, question mark is known as a query string, which we are going to use to get parameters. Now, this is okay, because this is a default way that things work. But we want it to look a little bit better than this. So instead of this, we want something that looks like this course, and then maybe something like this, so 10 slash five, something like that, right? 
it's much shorter and it looks much cleaner and then also it will contain the information about maybe the course here for good seo or search engine optimization on google so in order to do something like this we would have to create folders on our computer in the same way that you can see this happening right now if i go to this uh, where is that local version? Oh no, I have lost it. Where is the... Okay, this is the one right here. As you can see, there's Udemy slash template slash uh, Zen blog, Zen blog, then contact. Now, these are real folders in my server. But if we had to do this and create actual folders, it would be a nightmare. We'd have too many folders for every file that we create, we would have to make a folder. So instead, we will have to lie to the server that uh, make it look like they are folders, but then we handle this content on our own. So the thing that will handle this, create this, is known as a router. So without going into much detail, just know this is why we need the router. We need to clean up our URLs, that's number one, and we need the router to tell the controller what pages to load, etc because the page loading is determined by whatever is in the URL. So the router will package the URL in a nice format that the controller can understand, okay? And then once the controller knows what to do, it will load the correct view. It will also ask the model to get the data that it needs for that view. Okay, so I hope this explanation has been good enough.